Hey everybody, hope you're doing well. Today we're going to cover uh, the cues for January 18th, 2021, or the week of. Uh, for brevity six, we're just going to call this the cues. Also, this is uh, Prep to Grow's um, recommendations and opinions based upon our AI and big data platform called Grow. So all the data that you see here is really generated from that and the information displayed. So let's just uh, jump into this. Uh, what's the net next for next week? Um, volatile. While there's a ton of positive things happening on um, the market, um, there is a, a huge amount of announcements coming out uh, the week of the 25th. Uh, there's 18 main ones we tracked. Amazon, uh, AMD, Microsoft, etc. all announcing the week after that. So typically what you see around something like that, you see a little bit of a pullback or just some general um, gain, getting out of profits or whatnot. So you think it's going to be a bit volatile. Otherwise, we would say it's going to be a, 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 a bull market, whereas it may go up and down throughout the week because of that. Uh, so we think generally it's volatile, but really good stuff happening. Q4 growth, which is what uh, most folks or companies are announcing over the next two weeks, look phenomenal. Q1 growth, there's a bit of a slowdown at the beginning of the month, uh, fully bounced back, and now they're growing again like uh, they're growing Q4. We're kind of show that. Bang Plus is ramping up, analysts raising expectations, high call volumes. Uh, only concern is just why it's volatile. Uh, lots of earnings uh, and unemployments. Uh, rate is very high so that's or increasing so that's typically not good for the broader uh, macro conditions so let's get into who's announcing next week um there's four biggies that we track there's a couple others that are small which uh, probably have no bearing on the cues but four biggies netflix texas instruments intel intuitive surgical for this um Review, we're gonna cover Netflix and Intel. We covered last week, but we're just gonna give an update of that. Texas Instruments, super boring company. They acquired a company I worked for uh, many years ago called National Semiconductor. Very boring, important company to the market, but generally flat stuff for this quarter. Intuitive Surgical, um, little impact, but they look pretty decent for this quarter as well. Let's jump into Netflix and Intel, but uh, actually before that, so as you can tell, the week of the 25th, there's a ton of announcements, all the biggies, Amazon, AMD, Microsoft, Tesla, Facebook, Apple, et cetera. Going to be a big, big um, week for those announcements of the January 25th. But let's jump into Netflix first. Um, Netflix has struggled. We have really good accuracy of predicting them. Uh, for the Q's holdings, they make up about 1.85%. Uh, they could surprise us and come out with something good. Uh, but the reality is, if you look at the graph here and what we have in red, uh, stock price has kind of set level, but they're on a decline. Um, they started to kind of ramp up into Q1, uh, but they're nowhere near where they were last year at this time. So great concern for Netflix going into their earnings next week uh, and they're making their uh, quarterly uh, q4 announcement in their their fiscal year end it's a great company uh, they're in my hometown of los gatos so certainly uh, like them and hopeful they do well but the, the data is pointing to something else so let's jump into intel uh, intel had a ceo change this week um, certainly uh, will hopefully help future tense and intel is continue to climb out of where they were when they dropped off the, the cliff in May. Um, Intel was my first real job in college. Uh, certainly uh, like the company, hopeful for the company, um, but they're very far behind in terms of where they're at. Uh, but let's take a look at Intel and just where our price predictions are for them coming into it. So this is Grow. It's our AI big data screening and stock recommendation platform. So if I just type in Intel, um, you'll see where we're at with that. Uh, so we're reckoning a lot of puts. I actually bought them yesterday after uh, the news calmed down, or their stock price calmed down from the CEO announcement. Um, so it's a good put so far. 
Um, we're projecting that they're at 58 today. They're going to drop back down to about 51. Um, they are climbing out, but they really, their long-term strategies is, is what's hurting them and the analysts. The CEO should help, but still, um, there's quite a lot of work to be done there. Uh, and the data is just showing that. Now, AMD is announcing the week after that, so let's take a quick look at AMD as a comparable. Um, not a lot of volatility around or um, individual option activity for AMD, but if we jump, just jump into AMD, we have very good accuracy on AMD, predicting them. We're predicting a call. We're expecting that their stock price is going to go up to about 101 within uh, the next three months or sooner. Um, again, very good accuracy with them. Um, good company, but as a comparable, AMD is looking just to do a, a lot better. Let's look at one more that's announcing on the week of the 25th, uh, ADP, since it's right at the top. ADP has had a good role. They're pretty tied to the unemployment rate, um, and so we are predicting that they're going to go up to 177, and we have great accuracy with them. I think this has a lot to do with the more macro conditions of the new stimulus and that kind of stuff. Um, so, but with current unemployment rates, uh, this may take a little while to hit our average time of 25 to 50 days for it to hit its price prediction. So um, that should be realistic and just in terms of where they're at. Um, but we have good predictions of them. They look good. Unemployment rate should start to turn around with the stimulus. So should be positive on ADP for the future. So let's just jump back into um, our reasoning behind uh, the volatility, but um, soon after that growth. Um, year forecast revenue and uh, earnings per share. So clearly, if you look at the green boxes, last week they were down, which gave us the caution, um, but we were still showing growth. Um, but this week, change. Uh, analysts have started to up their forecasts higher than any previous time, just about. Um, yeah, higher than any previous time, earnings per share, as well as revenue. We do separate FANG Plus from non-FANG Plus, just because the FANG Plus actually make up 65% of the total QQQ or Q's holding. So if they move, the entirety of the, FANG, uh, the Q's move, I mean, Alphabet, Amazon, um, Facebook and all those, you know, I think they have at least over 8% individually of the queues holding. So they move, uh, the whole queues move. Down below that is the rest of them. Um, the 85 companies that make up the remaining 35%. Uh, they look steady. Some uh, increases to their forecast as well. So it looks good for, for Q1. If we jump into uh, stock volume, relatively consistent. Um, certainly up from last year at this time, uh, but that's, you know, to be expected with all the stimulus, all the Fed backing the stock market and the, the high growth of the stock market. And certainly should be more volume in there. Uh, our quarterly predictions for the Qs, I mean, off the charts, to be honest. So last year, I mean, if we look at Q1 beginning versus Q1 last year, markedly different different growth trajectory. Our, our growth forecasts, as well as the analyst forecasts, are just skywards. Um, certainly the data that we're seeing supports this, so we expect the Qs, to, once they get past kind of the, the next week's volatility of the pre-earnings jitters, uh, it should continue to go up. Same thing with our uh, long option volume. Um, fangs are going up. Uh, the the non-fangs are kind of flat with some highs and some puts, which just I won't worry about that too much. Again, they make up 35% of the total Q's holding, so it may be a couple of oddities in there where certainly they may go down, but the, the general Q's are going to go up. Or we're at least predicting that they're going to go up. Our uh, bear versus burl calls, um, again, more calls than puts on um, the Q's, which is great, and kind of a, a general reversal on the non fangs, but I wouldn't really consider that much of an issue going into to, uh, Q1 with all the growth that we're seeing. Predict the stock price. We do some, see some anomalies in, the, in our stock price predictions. Maybe there's going to be some pullbacks just because they're so high. Um, 
And so we'll see how that plays out over the next 30 to 60 days. Uh, but the reality is the Qs are, their growth trajectory looks very high. So we should see that the data level out and this will start to go up a bit over the next um, couple of weeks as, as our price predictions catch up to that. But again, overall Qs are, look like they're continuing their rapid growth into Q1 from Q4. Uh, analysts are upping their predictions. We're upping our growth targets. Generally, Qs should perform well. Um, appreciate your time. If you like the content, please like and subscribe. And happy trading.